Yes, I want to thank God and my pastor, Pastor Ayo, and the church for this opportunity to speak on this anointed altar today. Like Pastor said, please pray for me. So today we're looking at Christian still worship. Thank you. We're looking at Christian still worship, and I've entitled today's sermon Withholding Nothing. Withholding Nothing. The Bible defines um, the dictionary. Let's start with the dictionary. It defines stewardship as the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. Sometimes we have a narrow um, approach to Christian stewardship. And when it comes to Christian stewardship, a lot of people think that it's just about giving your money to God. But no, it encompasses more than that. See, worship is broader than just giving money towards the work of God. Biblical still worship refers to the management of all that God has given unto us in abundance to use for his glory, the edification of others, and also ourselves. It encompasses utilizing all the resources he has provided to us for the betterment of his um, creation. So stewardship includes being accountable for our time, our talent, and also our what? Our treasure. Stewardship should be understood as a relationship of trust between you and your creator, God. We all, we all have to come to the realization and understanding and acknowledgement of the fact that God owns everything. He owns you, he owns me. Everything on earth belongs to him including ourselves. We need to keep this knowledge constantly at the back of our mind for us to be better stewards of all the resources that he has entrusted unto us. So for today's sermon, I'm going to touch on the stewardship of our time, the stewardship of our talent, and also the stewardship of our treasures. Okay? So let's start with the stewardship of our time. For this particular gift that God has given to us, God has not been partial. God has given to each and every one of us the same amount of time. So everybody has 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. So if we liken our, um, our time to, our, um, to a currency, how do you spend this currency called time that God has given unto you? Time, they say, is the essence of life. So how do you spend your time? Note that the way you spend this currency called time can change the trajectory of your life, either for good or for evil. When you spend the currency of time, in quotes, let's say in an employment, you get paid a salary or a wages at the end of the month or at the end of the week. Some spend this currency called time by investing in creating things why others spend their time doing things that are not productive? Let me paint a scenario to you. This applies to me. I don't know if it applies to you. <laughs> Let's say I've had a good day's job, um, um, work in a particular day of the week, and I'm feeling really good with myself. All the targets I set for myself, I've been able to achieve them. And I said, okay, let me just spend some time on my phone. I pick up my phone, and I said, oh, I, I, I'm going to WhatsApp. Let me just go on to WhatsApp. The women's group, I, I don't go there all the time, so there are like hundreds of messages waiting for me. I decide, to, okay, let me just go through these messages. As I'm going through the messages, three sisters had their birthdays during the week, so I had to drop, you know, prayers for them. Type special messages, prayers for those sisters. As I'm going through, scrolling through my phone, a picture, a, um, a video pops up. The title looks interesting. Let me just quickly go to YouTube. It's just five minutes. The video is just five minutes. So there goes I on to YouTube. I spent five minutes watching that video. As I'm about to leave YouTube, guess what happened? My favorite, one of my favorite series just dropped. Abattoir. Anybody in the house that can relate? They just dropped their new series. Ah, it's just one hour. Okay. Let me just spend one hour, you know. It's just going to be one hour looking through the, watching that video. Before you know it, you have spent like two, three hours 
on your phone. I know that scenario happened to only me. Anybody else in the house? Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> ah, so where do we, how, where did the time go? How do we spend our time? You know, for some people, they take pride in the fact that they are not interested in, you know, the social media. But guess what? They spend their time hours on ending on the phone to Nigeria, one hour, to one brother or one sister. Some say it's about business, but no money is coming out of that business. Where do you spend your time? For the Gen Z generation, it might be on video games. What are you spending your time on? Some of us, we waste our time on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, while others are busy making money from this same Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, creating content. Some of us, we spend our time procrastinating, while others spend their time having a to-do list and actually following it through. You know, some of us, we spend our time watching TV series, while others are busy making money, creating what we are watching. Some spend their time studying, gaining new skills, degree and accreditation, while others spend their time partying, clubbing, and achieving nothing. For those of you in school, what do you spend your time doing? Some spend their time working hard, while others spend their time lazing, sleeping around. The Bible says in Proverbs um, 24, 33 to 34, a little sleep and a little somber, a little folding of hand to rest, and what? Poverty will come to you like a thief, and scarcity like a what? Amber. I pray that poverty will not come unto you like a thief or scarcity like an ham man. But if this is not going to happen to you, then you need to be strategic about how you spend your time. So I ask you again, how do you spend this currency? God, call time that God has given unto you. Time, are you spending it wisely or are you wasting it away? Are you being productive with your time? Are you a good steward of the time that God has given to you? What are you doing with your time? Are you withholding your time from God, the one that gave you all the time? Or are you reserving a portion of this for him? If we are to re equate this our time to, let's say, our income that God asks of us to give 10%. So let's say... 10% of 24 hours in a day, that will be approximately, let's say, 2.4 hours in a day. Do you spend 2.4 hours in a day for God? Or even 30 minutes in your day, do you spend it for God? How do we spend this currency called time that God has given unto you? Do you spend some of it in praying, in reading his love letter to you, or even serving in his, God, in his house? Like the drama we watched, before he had the job, he was serving. He gave God his time. But after that, what happened? He could not give God his time again. So how are you spending this time that God has given to you? The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Are you making the most of the opportunity that comes your way? Are you making the most of the opportunity that God gives to you? Are you dedicating some of your time in precious service to him in his house? They call for community service. Are you there to give your time? Brother Busy is always asking for someone to volunteer, to go to the um, care home. Are you volunteering your time? In the feeding of the homeless, there are so many things. Evangelism, Medadari, we are all looking for people to serve in the household of God. Are you giving God part of your time? So I ask you again, are you a good steward of your time or you are withholding your time from God? Food for thought for each and every one of us. So I'll move to the next one, our talent. So we know this very popular um, proverb um, that Jesus gave in Matthew 25, 14 to, um, I'll read just a few of the, um, the story, a few verses from the story. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called 
his own servants, and deliver unto them his good. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, one. To everyone, every man, according to his ability, and straight away took his journey. God has given us talents and spiritual gifts according to our abilities. It may be that someone may have more talent than you, but you surely do have one talent. Have you discovered what that talent is? Are you using your talent for God? When Moses was going to build the temple in the wilderness, the Lord blessed two men with spiritual gifts in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship so that they can build the temple. Are you using your talents to build the temple of God? Are you using your gift to serve in the house of God? Or are you selfish with the talent that God has given to you, like that servant that went and buried his talent so that the master will not gain anything from him? Majority of us, we are professionals in our own right. And in our various um, career and field of expertise, we serve diligently in our places of work, using our gifting to earn a living. How often do you do the same in the house of God or for the community at large? Are you giving your best to the master or you are giving him the remnants that is left for his service in his house? Sometimes we take up a position in the church, but we are not diligent in delivering that work that God has given to us. How diligent and dedicated are you in delivering the assignment God has given to you? In his household. We sometimes feel that because it is voluntary, we can be sloppy about it. <laughs> I want you to remember the owner of the gift will ask of you to give an account of how you have used the talent and the gifting that he has given to you for his kingdom. Remember that we are accountable to God, not to pastor, not to elder. We are accountable to God for what he has given unto us, for the assignment he has given to you. I want you at this moment to have a meeting with yourself. Have a meeting with yourself. Reflect on the talents and gifts that God has given to you. Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Are you using enough of that gift for God? Are you giving back unto him what he has given unto you? Are you using your gifts to bless the kingdom of God and his people here on earth? Or are you selfish? Or are you making excuses at the slightest opportunity? Some of us, we are very comfortable warming the benches in church without giving any of our service back to him. Or are you diligent in your service to God? I want you to reflect on this. If you are diligent in your service to God, I want to thank God on your behalf. But if you are not, I want you to think, take a moment to think differently. How can I change to ensure that I make meaningful contribution towards building God's temple and his people? Remember that we are all one body in Christ. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3 to 8, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these do not all have the same function, so in Christ, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according to your faith. If it is in serving, then serve. If it is in teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, please give encouragement. If it is in giving, give cheerfully. If it's to lead, do it diligently. 
And if it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. I want you to reflect on this passage. Are you diligent in your service to God? Are you diligent in your service to God, his church, his cause, and his people? This is food for thought for each and every one of us. Remember what happened to the servant with one talent who buried it. The only one talent he had was what? Taken away from him and given to the person that multiplied their own talent. For those of us struggling to be a blessing by not giving, but by those of us withholding of our talent from God, from the work of God, I pray that God will open your spiritual eyes to see and identify the gifts and talent he has given to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God will give you the grace to be willing to start using your talent to build the body of Christ. May you not be a bench warmer in God's house, but rather, I want, you to, I want to challenge you today for you to use your gift for the kingdom of God. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy it in according to your faith in the name of Jesus. If your gift is in serving, then serve diligently. If it's in teaching, teach diligently. If it's to encourage, I want you to give encouragement. If it's in giving, please give generously in the name of Jesus. And also, for those of us that are already using our talents diligently in the house of God, I pray that the Lord will continue to enlarge your coast in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will continue to empower you in the name of Jesus as you use your gift diligently for his kingdom. I pray the blessing of Exodus 23, 25 over you. I decree and declare over your life that as you serve the Lord your God diligently, he will surely bless your bread. He will surely bless your water. The Lord will surely take sickness away from the midst of you. They shall not cast their young or be barren in your land, even as you serve the Lord diligently. The number of your days the Lord will fulfill, even as you serve him diligently in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll go on to the next one, which is our treasure. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirm his covenant, which is sought to your ancestor as it's this day. Before I start talking about our treasure today and our money, I want to say a big thank you to every member of Blessed Hope here that giving you know, that are giving systematically and regularly towards the work of God being done here in Blessed Hope. May the Lord continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to enrich you and provide for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, if you are listening to me and you have not joined some of us that are doing this, I want to employ you to have a rethink and join the growing number of those you know, giving regularly to the work of God done here in Blessed Hope, and the Lord will indeed bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So now, before I talk about, uh, as I go on, I found a very interesting story, you know, on the internet while I was preparing for this sermon, talking about our treasure, the relationship we have with money. So a man had an heart, had a heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. So, when he stabilized, the doctor told his family, because of his heart condition, he cannot receive any exciting news, and he cannot receive a lot of company. So, you know, they just have to manage him like that. So while he was still in hospital, his, um, his rich uncle, very rich uncle, died and left him a million pounds. So there was a dilemma. How do we break this news to this, amount, with the, to this man with the least amount of excitement? So they decide to employ the help of his pastor. Not my pastor, his pastor. So his pastor, they ask his pastor if he can go ahead, you know, and break the news to him gradually. So the pastor said, yeah, why not? I'll go ahead, I'll do it. 
So the pastor went to him and was talking to him, you know, building up the conversation gradually, and he just slotted it into the conversation that, so, um, dear brother, what if, um, by the way, if you um, inherit um, a million pounds, um, what will you do with the money? The man thought for a second and said, mm, I think I'll give half of it to the church. On hearing it, guess what? The pastor collapsed and died. Ah, let me ask you a question. <laughs> what kind of relationship do you have with money? The <laughs> Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said to his um, disciple in Mark 10, 24. I know it, a lot of you are wondering, what relationship do you have with money? Ponder on that. <laughs> Mark 10, 24 to 25, Jesus said, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Are you being ruled by your riches? Are you have, have you made your money your mini God? Has money taking the position of God in your life? Are you a good steward of all the financial resources that God has entrusted you with? At the heart of Christianity is giving. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave heaven's best to us that whosoever believe in him, he gave us Jesus Christ, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the ultimate sacrifice of all. We are more like God when we give. So I'm going to touch on four points about giving. There's so many points because of our time. I've just limited it to four points about giving and giving to God. The first one is about um, giving until sacrifice. And that's why I talk about the sacrifice that God himself gave for us. Obviously, the pastor in the story, short story I gave, is not inclined to giving. Or is not inclined to giving sacrificially. If not, he shouldn't have died at the thought of his church receiving half a million pounds. You know, he just died because of that news. Matthew, Jesus said in Matthew 28, and Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the ultimate sacrifice. God gave the best gift in heaven to us, which is a huge sacrifice. Godly giving entails sacrifice, and God does not expect anything less from us. So I ask you this question. What is the size of your sacrifice? Some of us struggle a lot to give our financial resources to God. Why others, it is second nature to them. Sometimes, when you look at your budget, your outgoing is more than your incoming. And when that happens, what happens? A lot of us, the shortfall in our income, we always do or attribute it to God. Just like the man with the two cows. One for God, one for him. He had two cows. One for God, one for him. An unfortunate situation happened. One of the cows died. When asked, which of the cow died? We should know the answer. It was the Lord's cow that died. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, how often do we allow the Lord's cow in our watch to die? How often do you attribute the shortfall or losses in your finances to God? This is food for thought for each and every one of us. The truth is that Sometimes, you can, someone can give a thousand pounds and it's nothing to them. And why somebody can give ten pounds and it's all that they have? Just like the story of the widow's might. Jesus said that woman gave everything. It looks small to the disciple, but she gave all. She gave two coins. She could have kept one to herself, but she gave everything. The woman could have given one of the coins so that she has one left. But she gave everything with all the nothing. Now, that is true sacrifice. In 2 Samuel 24, 24, David said, No, 
replied the king, I insist on paying a price, for I will not offer to the Lord my burnt offering that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. How generous are you with your weekly sacrifice or monthly sacrifice or offering to the Lord? Are you bringing to the Lord an offering that cost you nothing? I would like us all to ponder on this question as I move to the next point. Number two, giving gives leads to life. Giving leads to life. Fresh water comes from a brook and fill the Sea of Galilee. This body of water has always been fruitful in fish. Then, the Sea of Galilee takes that water and gives it into the Jordan River. The famous Jordan River uses its water to turn the desert into a rose and makes it a land flowing with milk and honey. The Jordan River spills into the Dead Sea. This Dead Sea does not have an outlet. It just keeps taking. It has no outlet. It keeps taking and taking. It takes water in but does not give anything out. This produces the salient problem which makes it salty and dead. Fish cannot survive in the Dead Sea. I ask you a question, brothers and sisters. Are you a Dead Sea that keeps receiving and not giving with no outlet where you can be a blessing to others and to the work of God? Or you like, or are you like the Jordan River that share its resources to others? Is God able to entrust resources in your hand, both financial resources and all the talent and all the resources that He has given to you, with the hope that you will be a channel through which this will be distributed and flow out to others? I want you to think about this. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For the measure, the same measure that you meet without, it shall be measured unto you. God holds no man. When you give, it returns to you in abundance, in multiple folds. Even the mathematics of God, I cannot comprehend it. So why are we withholding our financial resources from him? I pray that as to make a decision today to be a blessing towards the work of God, that God will indeed give you a good harvest in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will give you heaven's best, good measure, Pressed down and shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom, even as you give unto the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that men will look for you to do you good as you give unto the work of God in the mighty name of Jesus. May you receive life and life in abundance, even as you give generously towards the work of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The number three. Giving to God should be done cheerfully. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7, the point is this. Whosoever, whosoever sows sparingly shall also reap uh, sparingly. Whosoever sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly, or under compulsion. For God loves a... God loves a cheerful giver. Have you ever been in a congregation, a Christian congregation, where the appeal for money feels like you are under pressure, that they are compelling you to give, and you start feeling uncomfortable? I've been there, you know. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. You know, God is no one that will compel you to give. He has all the powers, you know, to force us to give, but he wants us to do it from a willing heart. He wants us to do it from a cheerful heart. God does not want slaves. He wants children. He wants lovers. He wants partners. He wants friends. 
does, God does not want you to give reluctantly under pressure, but rather that he wants you to give cheerfully. The Bible says in Psalms 50, 10 to 15, Psalm 50, it says, For every beast of the field is mine, and the castle, castle, castle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountain, and the beasts of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bull, or drink the blood of goats? Or, of, or goat, offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vow unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. Amen. You know, there are circumstances that can lead us to make, you know, sacrificial pledges and, you know, you know make a vow unto the Lord. When you do, please. Ensure you redeem your pledge. I know I've had such a circumstance in my life when we were believing God for a baby. I made a, you know, a commitment. I didn't even tell my husband about it. It was a huge commitment. But, you know, that was what was laid upon my heart. And when the time came, I had to tell her, I said, my dear, <laughs> I need to give this. And he, he supported me and we gave our vow to God. So remember, when you make a vow to God, please, be diligent in fulfilling your vow. Do not make a pledge to God if you are not going to redeem it. Remember that what remember what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, who sold a piece of land, and they decide to keep a part of it for themselves. Peter said to them, "Before you sold the land, it was yours. When you sold it and you had the proceed, it was yours." So why did you lie? He said, you did not lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. And they had instant judgment for that event. And everybody that heard about it, they were scared. God is a God of mercy. But remember, he's also a God of judgment. Ecclesiastes 4, 5 and 6 says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better, listen, I repeat that, it is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. So, do not make a vow to God in haste. And when you do make a vow, I pray that God will give you the grace to redeem and pay your vow cheerfully and see how God is going to bless you in abundance in Jesus' name. Now, the number four. As a final point for this, withholding of your tithes and offering is stealing from God. I know some, some of us know this, but this is a gentle reminder in case we are forgotten. You know, the Bible says in Malachi 3 8 to 10, we're very familiar with this passage. Malachi 3. 8 to 10, say, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. Ye are caused with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and I dare say the full offering into the storehouse, <laughs> that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be room enough to receive. There shall be room enough to receive it. Please ask yourself, in what way am I stealing from God. I don't want you to raise your hand. You can raise it up in your mind. <laughs> if you have ever mispaid your tithes, then I dare say you are a thief. Some of us might be faithful in returning our tithes, but we are not in giving our offering. 
Notice what the, the verse says. You have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have you robbed me? It says, invite and offering. Now, some of us may not be stealing God's tithe, but we are very good and diligent in stealing his offering. Are you stealing God's offering? For us to be able to claim the full benefit of that promise, we must fulfill the full condition in that first, first by bringing the full tithe and I dare say the full offering into the house of God. I pray that God will cause a shifting in our thinking and in our theology today. I pray that God will, will give us a change of heart and give us the grace to be faithful in returning our fight and giving of a generous offering to him so that we can continue to enjoy and operate in God's overflow. I decree and declare that as you give of your best to the master with all the nothing from him, he will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the Lord will rebuke the devourer for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that nothing shall be destroyed from your fruit, the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your wine cast their fruit before their time in the mighty name of Jesus. In conclusion, Christian stewardship is about our obligation as Christians to manage and utilize diligently the time, the talent, and the treasure that God has bestowed on us all in abundance. For you to do this, you need to genuinely love God. You need to genuinely trust in him. And if we are not, we need to rededicate our life to him and have a renewed mind. Are you faithful in how you handle the resources of talent, time, and treasure that God has given to you? Can God entrust abundance in your hand with the hope that you will be a channel of blessing to others and not be a stagnant water? Are you faithful in returning your tithe and giving of a generous offering? What are you willing to sacrifice for the kingdom? Remember the ultimate giver of all, God gave us Jesus Christ. The best gift ever had, had to free us from our sin and to give us eternal life. God gave us the best of the blessing of this beautiful earth and wisdom to make wealth and is only asking of us a small fraction of the abundance he has given to us. David said he will not give unto the Lord what costs him nothing. Are you giving unto the Lord what costs you nothing? Will you reconsider giving more of your time to God in private and in public, in your quiet time and in your selfless service to humanity? What about your talent? What special spiritual gift do you have that you have not yet surrendered into the service of God? Are you willing to start giving of your talent to God and to serve humanity? Your money, or God's money in your hands. Think about it. Who owns you? To whom do you belong? Will you ask God to give you the heart of a servant who surrendered all to the master? Will you ask God to make you a willing heart like David so that you can give him only the best of your treasure that he truly deserves. If this is your desire, I would like to invite you to stand up with me at this time as we seek the Lord in prayer. I invite Pastor to pray for us.
us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, because all things come of you. There is nothing that we have that you have not given to us. And Lord, the truth is that we owe you everything. If you are to ask for 90%, it's still yours. But Lord, even in the little you have asked for, we are yet unfaithful. Lord, we just want to pray this afternoon, forgive us our sins. For those times where we have failed to return our thanks, for those times where we have not cheerfully given our offerings, for those times where we have prioritized ourselves above you, Lord, please forgive us. Lord, forgive us for even as parents for not teaching our children. Forgive us for leaving the wrong impression in their hearts. Father, Lord, we are guilty as charged. But Lord, today, thank you, Lord, because your Holy Spirit will interpret these words in our hearts and cause us to be the people you want us to be. We we'll pray, Father, Lord, for we know that when we seek first the kingdom, your word says that every other thing shall be added. So, Lord, help us to be faithful. Amen. Make us faithful stewards of our time, of our talents, of our treasure. Amen. Make us faithful stewards also of our body temple. Amen. Help us, Father, Lord, that we will realize that without you we are nothing. So, to this end, we pray that even as we continue in our walk with you, that, Father, Lord, we will be able to look back and say that surely now we understand even better. We ask for your Holy Spirit to help us to always give, return our tithes and our offering as our first fruit. And, Lord, when we have done so, may you bless the remaining. Thank you for your daughter who have ministered to us. We ask, Lord, that as she has watered us, Father, Lord, return and water Heinrich. Amen. And thank you because, Lord, we pray for all our visitors today. Lord, we ask, Lord, that the blessings of today will rest upon them. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen.